Well, I'd like to begin by um, welcoming uh, Dr. Susan Sun. Uh, Dr. Sun is a professor in the Department of Grain Science and Industry here at K-State. Um, and she was a recipient of the of one of the 2021 uh, Global Food System Seed Grant Awards. And Dr. Sun and her colleagues did a project on affordable regenerative beef proteins from cattle blood waste for innovative food proteins. Dr. Sun? Thank you for the good introduction. Uh, let me share the slides. Let me give you a few minutes background about this research. And currently, the U.S. produces nearly 50% of total world beef productions. And according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, approximately about like 180 million cattle were slaughtered in 2020. And as a result, and so if we count one cattle, has about 15 liter blood. So it's about total 2.7 billion liters annually were generated. And so utilization of uh, cattle blood for value added products has become a very important task. It's not only to increase uh, the economical sustainability and to uh, the cattle and the farming, um, and the beef industries, but also to improve uh, environmental uh, pollution. So to date, about 30% of the cattle blood are currently used for food additives and to improve uh, the texture and the nutrition aspects. And then the rest is mainly used for uh, animal feed and also waste, it just uh, discharged. And so that is why producing high quality regenerative beef protein called RBP from the cattle blood uh, is very important that would benefit the cattle production system and the beef industries, and as well as uh, the, to support the food uh, sustainability. And so um, regarding uh, the food resources, and so protein is a vital part of a healthy diet. Everybody use it. And the beef is an excellent protein sources containing all of the necessary essential uh, amino acids that helps uh, human metabolic processes and the immune systems and the functional protein uh, synthesis in, in human body. Yeah. So then world population is rapidly growing and it will be more than 9 billion by 2050. And um, that represents huge demands on beef and our beef proteins. And so then on the earth, and we have a limited resources. So therefore production of a high quality RBPs directly from renewable stem cells through physical engineering approach and will be um, offering uh, affordable dropping innovative food proteins and so particularly significant to uh, global food security and food sustainability. And so uh, the renewable stem cells is the target cells we should convert it from uh, the cattle blood. And so that is why the goal is to develop enabling technologies for large scale production of uh, generative uh, beef proteins. We call the RBP, utilizing uh, the cattle blood waste from um, slaughterhouse. And we have uh, three objectives. Uh, one is to convert cattle blood into self renewing induced pluripotency stem cells. So we have a short name is IPSCs. And the second objective is to develop a scalable uh, three-dimensional scaffolding system for the uh, IPSC for RPB production. And the objective three is to evaluate the nutritional quality 
of the RPB uh, in vitro and in, vi in vivo um, in comparison with the reference proteins extracted from beef. So with that, and we hypothesize uh, the, um, the protein from the cattle blood uh, should be contain enough essential amino acids and even higher than the beef. And also the protein um, from the renewable uh, stem cells uh, would also be easy digestive than the beef. And so, uh, so that has uh, the nutrition benefits to the special uh, groups humans with uh, kind of uh, digestive issues or some senior or uh, young baby children. And so uh, here is uh, the two routes. Uh, one route, uh, A, uh, is the traditional methods and for uh, culture beef productions. And usually they need to uh, take sample uh, from the cattle muscle, and then they isolate the cells, uh, stem cells called MSC. And then the MSC will be expanded on 2D and then um, differentiated into uh, uh, beef cells and also in 2D. And then here is the route B is our uh, goal. Uh, is uh, we use uh, cattle blood as a resources from the uh, batters and then convert this uh, blood into renewable stem cells called iPSCs. And then uh, use a three dimensional system to expand the iPSCs and then to produce a beef proteins. So here is the challenging issues and the challenging issues are uh, the two major categories. And the one is the conversion blood to renewable stem cells. We have a stem cell company uh, who involved in this, uh, uh, this project and they are helping. And the other category is the cost for production, uh, the factors. Um, number one is we need low cost uh, 3D uh, functional material design since the cells need a scaffold to live first. And for medical uses, those uh, um, some of the materials is an, it's good, uh, it's not, ex uh, but it's expensive. And so for the beef production is a large amount. We need to produce a low cost uh, uh, the functional materials. And so the second challenging is uh, the cell culture media providing the cells nutrient is also expensive. And so uh, in this larger production, we aim to reuse those uh, cell culture media to see if those uh, culture media can be recyclable. And then the third challenge is to scaling up. And for life science, the medical application, usually the scales is in uh, like a uh, 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 half a milliliter and a maximum of one milliliter, maybe five milliliters. So those kind of are in the wild place. And so then for larger protein uh, uh, scales, uh, we have to uh, produce those in uh, the tank like a tons, yeah. And so uh, we have developed a novel protein hydrogels called a PG matrix and for 3D cell cultures. And then this is the micro uh, structures and nano web structure and stem cell like it. And this uh, hydrogel has a very uh, special unique uh, uh, viscoelastic properties. It's a shear thinning and also uh, the gel can be recovered um, if you share it into liquids and then it can be recovered uh, in a few uh, uh, seconds or one minute and back to its original gels. And so traditionally the cells grows on 2D, the blue represent the cells and here is a treated uh, uh, petri dish. And so the cell grows flat 
And the disadvantage of this technology is uh, uh, the cell yield is low and also quality is low. And also it's very hard to uh, scale up because uh, this will take a lot of surface area if you're scaling up. Yeah, so in 3D and the cells, if you have a single cells and then encapsulate it in the uh, scaffolding system, and then uh, the cell grow, and then this is a kind of a, a split, and then continue split and grow in three dimensional manner. Yeah, so if you have a bunch of cells and then you could uh, encapsulate into the hydrogels, and so then you could harvest them uh, in a high yield, and then also they grow in 3D and it's more healthier. And so here is some of the results now from uh, 3D cell culture of uh, IPSC. This IPSC is derived from a human blood IPSCs. And so this is a grow in the spheroids. And here uh, in contrast is a 2D. So cells just grow on the surface as a flat. And so if you compare uh, proliferation, the bar is the proliferation rate, the fold. Um, and the line is the variability. Uh, compare this uh, versus to 2D. Uh, see uh, the proliferation on 2D is not um, stable and sometimes high and sometimes low. And also the variability is a kind of uh, up and down is due to uh, a lot of uh, uh, condition. Um, so we don't have time to explain those, and but uh, you don't need to know that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, another uh, significant result is that we have achieved so far is uh, we uh, have scaled up from a 0.5 mil from the well plate and to uh, 10 mil to a volume container. And so the concept, although this is a 10 mil, and then the concept is different. Yeah, so this is a, a, the well plate, and then here is the container. So we allow the cells and the, the mix and uh, harvesting uh, easily. And so we also tested on the culture media and during the past year and past a year and a half. And so um, the media, we have um, multiple passages. And here is proliferation. If you look at the uh, bar, the blue is the control and the orange is um, uh, recycle uh, media once. And the gray is uh, recycle the media multiple uh, times. Yeah, so it's just recycled, recycled. And so if you could see that is uh, recycled, recycled, um, has no um, um, very much difference in a compared to control and in some cases higher. The reason because the proliferation are higher than the control because the during a uh, culture cell releases uh, some metabolic waste, but also release a lot of uh, beneficial uh, growth factors. Those is a very important nutrients. And so it's not just a food. Food is just a simple protein, a polysaccharide or some minerals. And those are growth factors are very important. And so then we think uh, if we reduce uh, the, if we optimize the uh, ratio, and then we could uh, recycle the media and uh, provide additional growth factors. Growth factors initially need to be added to the system. Those are also expensive. And so with this system, so once you give an initial push, and so it could be uh, sustainable for culture many uh, multiple passages. And so, um, um, for the nutrition um, analysis and the the cells, the iPSC cells and uh, the the proteins from the iPSC cells and uh, showed a higher essential amino acids compared to uh, the uh, this is a human iPSC. So we use those uh, data published uh, for human muscle um, 
proteins um, in the literature, the orange one. And so if you compare in most of the essential proteins are equal or higher than human muscles. And then uh, the non essential amino acid profile, they are also um, uh, similar, yeah, similar uh, or higher or better than the um, literature published data. And so with this, and you know, we assume the uh, IPSC from uh, the cattle would also have uh, higher essential amino acids and also non essential amino acids compared to beef. Yeah, so it's more nutrient, it's uh, more healthier. And so we also did in vitro protein digestibility analysis. And so uh, we start with 72%. And so here is the uh, IPSC and compared to beef protein. So we got a beef, uh, the protein extracted from the beef, this is from the uh, uh, grocery store. And so uh, compared to their uh, digestibility, and then we found um, the, the proteins from uh, the IPSCs has a higher uh, digestibility compared to the beef uh, proteins. And we also uh, have a significant breakthrough about uh, the um, three-dimensional uh, scaffolding materials. And so here is the preliminary data we just got last month and uh, modified uh, uh, the plant protein hydrogels and for cost reduction. And so the PG matrix control here, here is the variability and here is the prolifer proliferation rate. And so we have a three different formulas here. And so then you can see uh, one of the formulas showed a similar variability and also similar proliferation fold rate. And so uh, we are quite uh, happy about this. But this one is at a one-to-one -one ratio. That means uh, the PP, uh, the plant proteins versus uh, PG matrix. This is a one-to-one -one ratio. And so uh, we're gonna continue working on this and further reduce uh, the PG matrix and then increase uh, the plant protein. So that would uh, further uh, reduce uh, the production cost. And so here is the summary. And um, we have developed a three-dimensional culture system for human renewable stem cells. And we have scaling up from the, so yeah, by the way, uh, the human renewable stem cells, uh, IPSC, are used as control is the benchmark and for the cattle uh, IPSCs, yeah. And so, um, Skinning up from a 0.5 uh, well plate to uh, 3D uh, uh, 10 mil uh, in containers. And so it's a concept different. And a potential, we show the potential to reuse uh, the cell culture media. And so uh, without a recycle, we could culture the cells in uh, up to 50 passages and have no issues. But so far, uh, the multiple passage up to 10, we didn't see any variations. But uh, then we're going to continue uh, to watch because each passage takes time, five days. Yeah, that takes, takes time. We will see how long that would uh, uh, recycle. Yeah. And also, uh, we have obtained some of the good data to show the feasibility is to use uh, plant protein for low cost heterogels. And um, and also um, we have demonstrated uh, the renewable stem cell provides higher essential amino acid profiles and also uh, easier uh, digest um, digestive and so ongoing and the future research and the team received um, uh, federal uh, national uh, competitive grant. Uh, with uh, 600,000 and for three years. And so uh, we're gonna continue working on this project. And so, um, so currently ongoing 
is uh, we are developing uh, the cattle renewable stem uh, cells. And we have uh, showed some preliminary data and we got uh, the cattle IPSCs uh, just last week and uh, we have cultured for day three. And uh, so far we see some of the spheroids growing. And so hopefully a few months later, we're gonna have uh, exciting uh, results. And so um, we're gonna continue uh, the optimization of low cost hydrogels. And our target scaling up is from uh, 10 mil to 500 mil, and then to five liter in our lab. And then beyond five liter, and then probably uh, we need uh, kind of a budget to purchase a large scale uh, re reactor tanks and so. And also we're gonna conduct uh, in vivo animal testing uh, of the uh, nutritional properties once we have the cattle uh, uh, blood proteins, yeah. And so um, this project has uh, enormous economic and human health impact. And the first uh, is, uh, uh, is improve uh, economics of the beef industries and the cattle farming uh, by extending animal life cycles and so utilize the waste and also to improve uh, health conditions of special groups. Like I mentioned, uh, the senior or some chemotherapy people or low digestive uh, group of people and by providing easily digestive beef proteins with higher incenso amino acids. And so, uh, so there's a hopefully uh, this, um, the beef uh, uh, regenerative or beef proteins uh, could be uh, uh, designed as a nutraceutical and for uh, those special groups. And also uh, we sustain uh, the beef proteins for growing population. And so the world population is growing and the earth, uh, we have a limited resources and so, um, so we produce limited beef, although we could produce more than we need now, but then for the future, we may uh, not increase as fast as the growing population. And so for providing in essential amino acids and is um, very critical for human diet. And so here is the, um, the way to go. Uh, so we should continue to pursue uh, this uh, research. So with that, and so we um, truly appreciate the seed grants uh, support from a global food system. And for uh, 65,000, although it's small money, but uh, uh, make the team excited <laughs> to work on this and it's a good start. And so then we end up with uh, federal competitive uh, grants uh, to continue work on this. And hopefully we have uh, more uh, results to um, report. And so uh, the principal investigators involved in these two grants, uh, myself, um, Susan Sun, and um, also Dong Hai Wang, professor from a bio -ag engineering department and uh, Dr. Wei Chun, George Wang, a uh, professor from a food nutrition, uh, dietetics and uh, health, and uh, Dr. Zhang Yeager, professor from animal science in the industry, and uh, students and the research staffs involved in this project. We have a Dr. Guangyan Qi, uh, associate uh, scientist, and we have a Ms. Chuan Li, uh, PhD graduate research assistant, and also Ms. Shan Xu, uh, master uh, graduate student research. And also we have a new uh, PhD uh, graduate student, uh, Mr. Uh, Sheriff uh, uh, Raman. Uh, he just started uh, this fall semester and uh, he's making progress. And so uh, with that, and then I will just uh, stop uh, my talk. If anyone has questions or would like to discuss this project further, please reach out to Dr. Sun. Again, Dr. Susan Sun in the Department of Grain Science and Industry.